In the Stone Age, it was widely believed that evil spirits was the cause of mental illness. To treat this, a mentally ill person would be subjected to trepanation, which is drilling holes in one's brain to release the evil spirits. In the Stone Age, they used sharpened stones to perform trepanation. In North America, gradual scraping of the skulls in a circle was a common technique used by many North American tribes. In Europe, the holes in the skulls were mistaken to be from weapons or accidents, but due to the similarities, it was discovered to be from trepanation, which was used to treat every condition from headaches to seizures. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, was a Greek physician from classical Greek, the first documented chest surgeon, but also the first to introduce the concept of mental illnesses. His theory was an imbalance of humors, defined as bodily fluids, black bile, yellow bile, phlegm, and blood. When the humors were out of balance, the patient's personality, physical, and mental health were affected. This theory drifted away from the belief that people became ill due to the wrath of gods, as that was the way they were usually seen in Greece, Egypt, and Mesopotamia. Asclepiades was the first to distinguish between hallucinations, illusions, and delusions. He stressed the importance of environmental causes for mental illnesses and recommended more relaxing treatments opposed to bloodletting and restraints. Soranus suggested treatments that would exercise the mind, such as having patients participate in discussions with philosophers to cure their fears. Galen saw the importance of observation and his concept of psychic pathology, which was based on the nervous system. In addition, he saw clinical symptoms of depression as a sign of malfunctioning neurological structures. The most widely believed philosophy during the Middle Ages, the soul governed the body. This belief was influenced heavily by the religious influence of the churches and led to the scientific findings from Greece and Rome being forgotten. Nicholas Orisme, a significant philosopher in the late Middle Ages, thought that demons were the cause of most mental illnesses, a not uncommon theory at this time. Other than demonic possession, witchcraft, hysteria, and stress were all causes of mental illnesses. Treatments for the illnesses include exorcism, hearing mass, and drinking a cold glass of water. This was to try and make the demon so uncomfortable it would leave the body, but only if coaxing the demon out and insulting the demon didn't work. The higher class could afford doctors to come into their house and treat them there, and provide the family with instructions on how to care for the affiliated family member. Unfortunately, mental illness had not been as thoroughly researched as it is today, and most physicians didn't know how to properly treat patients. They would regularly use purges, emetics, and bleeding to treat the humors. If the family didn't want them at home anymore, the individual could be sent to a private home instead of an institution. Poor, sick individuals were sent to one of two places, Bedlam or the street. In Bedlam, family and friends were in charge of bringing food and other essentials to keep the inmates alive but also allowed visitors with no relation to any patients inside the asylum. This was done to raise hospital income. It cost 10 shillings to walk around the hospital and look at the deranged inmates. These visitors were often wealthy, educated, and well-bred. Bedlam thus became incredibly popular during the holidays. Asylums were very popular in Europe and the United States, with the most famous asylum being the York Retreat. At the time, the asylums were very beneficial to the community until the definition of insanity was brought into the 19th century. It came to include elders, epileptics, imbecilic, and those in the family who couldn't help support them and costed the family too much money. This resulted in the overcrowding of the newly integrated asylums, filled with people who weren't mentally ill but a burden to their family. The York Retreat was built in York, England, and it was a place for the mentally ill to live away from prisons, hospitals, and people zoos. It features gardens in which patients were encouraged to walk around in. They were offered four meals a day and they were encouraged to dress up and even had daily tasks they could complete, such as sewing, reading, gardening, or playing games. Because of how well patients were treated and their focus on moral therapy, 25% of people that were ill for more than a year were cured, and 75% of people that were ill for less than a year were cured. The success of the York Retreat caused more and more asylums to pop up all over Europe and the U.S. Other treatments included hypnotism, opiates for relaxation, the rest cure, which was five weeks of bed rest, a high-calorie diet, and massages, Freud's psychoanalysis theory, and severing the connections of the frontal lobes. Veterans returning home from World War II received improved treatment methods. The hospitalization of many individuals was followed by mass deinstitutionalization causing problems as a result. 
Francis Gell believed that eugenics was the best way to deal with the mentally ill in order to keep them from reproducing. After his theory lost its popularity, outpatient clinics became popular as they allowed patients to have freedom, but they could be treated when necessary. Unfortunately, many individuals became worse when they were placed in outpatient care. Mentally ill patients were often sterilized without their consent or knowledge while they were placed in hospitals to prevent them from mating with normal people as an effort to try and create a perfect race. Dr. Monas, a Portuguese neurologist, carried out the first lobotomy and received a Nobel Prize for his work in 1949 before the undesirable side effects from lobotomies began to show and the procedure lost popularity. Walter Freeman created what he thought to be a, was a faster, more efficient method called the ice pick lobotomy. A spike was driven beneath the eyelids of both eyes and then swirled around to scramble the neural connections. Individuals that cannot be placed in an institution against their will often became homeless because of a court ruling that prevented people from being placed against their will. Because they couldn't be forced into an institution, necessary treatment became difficult to provide for them. Families, neighbors, and friends did not want to be responsible for a deinstitutionalized individual, so the traditional support mechanisms decreased. Ideally, patients were to stay at home with their families and visit outpatient clinics, thus allowing them to have more freedom. Unfortunately, many mentally ill patients did not have any family or support system and resulted in them becoming homeless or going to community care facilities. Despite incredible advances in the treatment and understanding of the mentally ill, negative stigma associated with the mentally ill is still prevalent. Society views the mentally ill as less competent and as such they avoid socializing, interacting, and working with those affected by it. Insurance companies are often reluctant to pay for therapy as they see it as less of a burden than a physical illness. More modern treatments have been developed such as drugs to treat depression, anxiety, and schizophrenia and other types of therapies such as supportive psychotherapy, which is the talk treatment, and focuses on the relationship between the patient and the therapist who helps the patient with problem solving and expressing emotion. Psychoanalysis is understanding how one's past relationships has influenced their mind. Psychodynamic psychotherapy, the identification of patterns in the unconscious mind in their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Cognitive therapy, identifying distortions in an individual's way of thinking and attempting to understand the distortions and how they are causing an individual problems. Behavioral therapy, which is based on the idea that abnormal behaviors are due to a problem with learning involves interventions dedicated to helping an individual unlearn maladaptive behaviors. Interpersonal theory focuses on unresolved grief and individuals are taught to improve specific aspects of their relationships with others. Although humanity has come a long way in their treatment of the mentally ill, I still think we have much to improve in terms of the negative social stigma and stereotyping of the mentally ill.